Hey y'all, nice to see you. It's been a while. So a friend of mine was challenged on their autism diagnosis because they were self-diagnosed and I wanted to make a video about it. So by the most basic definition, self-diagnosis is the process of diagnosing or identifying medical conditions in oneself. It may be asserted by medical directories, books, resources on the internet, past personal experiences, or recognizing symptoms or medical signs of a condition that a family member previously had. The Asperger Autism Network says many adults with an Asperger autistic profile stumble upon the description of Asperger syndrome or autism spectrum. Some may believe that the information matches their history in their current situations and as a result may self-diagnose. So basically with self-diagnosis and autism, we are usually older, we weren't diagnosed in childhood, and so symptoms went ignored or unrecognized. And when we're older, we have access to more materials um, and information, we realize that all of this stuff that we thought was wrong with us is characteristics of being on the autism spectrum. And so self-diagnosis needs to be accepted in our community because it is the self-diagnosis that leads to professional diagnosis. Because based on the information that we've been given about what self-diagnosis is, unless we identify with the criteria, see where it impacts our life, acknowledge that it is still impacting our life, because we haven't had other people to recognize that we have it in ourselves, we have to do that. And then we realize we want a professional diagnosis. So when I was diagnosed, it was because I had self-diagnosed for about, about nine months. And so I was seeing all this information and everything about how I behaved, how my brain works, uh, the way that I socialized, all the aspects of autism spectrum was making sense in the context of my life. And so I identified with the criteria enough that I realized, okay, I need a professional diagnosis. The point of getting the professional diagnosis was to understand myself and treat myself in the way that I needed to be treated. Self-diagnosis needs to be accepted in the autism community because it is required. You have to identify with the criteria and be aware of how it impacts your life to the point where you want to get a professional diagnosis. If anything, everyone should read the autism diagnostic criteria and see if it applies to their life or not. And when they do identify with it and see the points in their life where it has affected them, then they should pursue the professional diagnosis if they want to, because then all your answers are there. So not only is it required, but it needs to be respected because these people have not been given a diagnosis when they were children. Not everyone gets that. There's a lot of ways that you can uh, avoid getting diagnosed because of your race, of your gender, of your economic status, if you have enough money to pursue a professional diagnosis. I'm not going to kick them out of my circle if I don't think they're autistic. I'm not going to be like, you can't come in the autistic community. I don't think you're really autistic. Autism shouldn't be seen as something you don't want to have. People should be accepting and open towards learning what the criteria is and the characteristics that make up an autistic person and being open to identifying with that. So I hope I've gotten my point across pretty well and that it didn't come, it didn't get too muddled. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for following my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for supporting me. Uh, I want to support you in any way that I can. So. Just let me know. <laughs> Bye.